Okay, we are live according to Google Hangouts. And if we are not live, shame on Google Hangouts. But no. Um, okay, I'm here with a special guest from uh, Wisconsin, Joe Panico. He's a fellow Ubuntu uh, Mate user like myself. And he's agreed to join me for this live event on this Total OS Today Live for this Friday, March 23rd, 2018. I hope you guys are warm because it's cold here in Ohio. What's the weather there like in Wisconsin? Uh, right now it says it's 39 degrees. But it's, it's 30. actually a comfortable 39. <laughs> yeah, it's 36 here. I get a low of 20. Mm, yeah. I do not like that. Not for Isn't this spring coming up or this week or next week? I lost track. Yeah, um, it's, I thought it was spring already, but it wasn't yeah, like that. well, <laughs> things run together. Spring isn't good enough. Forget about it. I want it to be like winter. Damn, bam! Give me summer now. I want six straight months of summer, Joe, because spring isn't good enough. Well, uh, you forgot about one thing. This episode is the Italian hour. So. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, yo, hey, yo, Joey. Thanks for reminding me. It's the yeah. Italian hour. I should have a glass of wine and not this, but um, yeah, maybe, well, that. this is a family show, but I guess red wine's okay, uh, you know. Provolone and some crackers or Italian bread, maybe. <laughs> yeah, really, some red wine, some suprasat, some tzatzitze, you know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there's people starting to come into the chat. We'll give it a few minutes, but yeah, you're watching a special presentation of Total OS Today live um, show, podcast. Um I may, when we're done, if you guys come in late and miss this, of course, you can rewind and play it. I may transcode this into an MP3 for you guys to, for you guys, and take it on the road if you want. Um, I'm here with Joe Panico from Wisconsin for this Total OS Today Live special broadcast. Uh, this is brought to you, sponsored partly in part by you guys who help contribute to the show. So thank you. Um, if you'd like to help out the show or the channel, go to the links below PayPal. And uh, you guys know what to do, to do, so thank you for your contributions. All right, so we have I am awesome 7478. We have JAC, Jack. Hello, gents, he says. Steve Winkler, good evening. We have Tim F. Uh, Tim says March 20th was the first day of spring, so there you go. And I guess that holds true depending on what part of the world you're in. Yes. That yeah, is we have true. a lot of uh, UK friends that come in too. So. That's right. And I think Australia, the seasons are reversed. When it's winter here, it's summer there, and vice versa. Yeah, because English uh, Bob was just mentioning the other day about their yeah. clock change, and we've already had ours for a couple of weeks. Yeah, here. theirs is like late, like two weeks later on or something. Yeah, But that's yeah. how ours used to be. They just changed it recently, actually. They moved ours up by three weeks, so which is fine with me. Um. Steve, Joe, do you have a YouTube channel? Or just um, you, you've got an uh, Amazon store, right? Or I lost track. No, I've got an eBay store, but no, I have uh, everybody. I think technically has a channel when you sign up for an account with this, but I haven't put anything on it. I've been toying with the idea, but I just don't have a good space, you know. And okay, to, right now, maybe if I did a background, because you know, for me, I like doing stuff like this, but. Uh, there are some things that you know I wouldn't mind educating about once in a while. You know, um, yeah, everybody's got different things. You know, matter of fact, like Tom Switch the Linux, he yes. he did uh, uh -huh. a little uh, video just the other day, uh, maybe it was yesterday, about Waterfox and yeah. how to install it. And he actually did it a little differently than I did, so I just put in his comments how I did it. I basically just dropped the in the user lab file, I looked for where Firefox basically whole, you know, uh, yeah. housed theirs and dropped the file in there and then just went in and created a menu launcher and then grabbed the icon for that and yeah. boom, it works. And it, you know, it was, it yeah. was quicker and either, but I do yeah. think it's good that you have, if you've got more than one way to know that stuff. You yeah. Know? I did catch bits and pieces. It was a bit too technical for me. Uh, normally, what I think I met, I think you had asked how to launch. I just downloaded the file, extracted it, cl clicked the icon, or give her permissions, and then to execute, and that's all that I did. I, th I think I, I think I mentioned that to you last month or month before. I can't yeah. remember, uh, but and that's all. I just keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah, it'll it'll work. The thing is, if you wanted to have it run and in your menu and all that, you yeah. can't necessarily do it from the extracted file. That way, you have to keep opening that file and going right. to that. Uh, launcher, yep. so it's, it, it didn't uh, bother me though. I just I just clicked it and it and it worked. But sure, I see your point. Yeah, 
Yeah, and um, you know, so and and I also have a little PC business too. So I noticed mm -hmm. when Tom did a great job, I, yeah. I thought with building his PC. The one thing that I noticed or I picked up on, and you know, you try to you hope that everybody takes it as uh, trying to be helpful. Yes, uh, he was struggling to put his power supply in. And he said, oh, that's because of the filter. Well, the filter actually goes, there's slots in the bottom, so you can pull it out and clean it from time to time. Yeah. It doesn't really go between the... So I commented on that, too. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing that's nice about these kind of shows. And as we talked about before we came yeah. on about the uh, yeah. the channel and what you've done over the years is, you know, you want to be out there and you want to help any way you can and hope that people take it as just that. It's It's useful information, helpful information. And, you know, I'm not always right about everything. You know, there's times that, you know, you, you say something, you make a mistake or whatever, and we all learn. I mean, you're never yeah. too uh, yeah. Learn, so. yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, just real quick, real quick. Anna, Rita. Anna Rita. Hello. Uh, we have Distro Tube DT. Derek, Derek, uh, Derek, Derek, my pal, my friend here. When you're doing a live show, don't use unstable OSs. <laughs> <laughs> His stream froze the other night. God uh, bless you, Derek. But it's like, what's the matter with you? <laughs> yeah, he was having some issues. <laughs> uh, but he was a good sport. He kept on going. He couldn't type yeah. in or do. Or do. He just looked at the comments. Yeah, anyway, so nicely done to a point. Yeah. But uh, Derek's DT's distro tube said, well, it's the excitement. You have a, you Linux geeks who are geekier than me have a strange definition of excitement. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, the stream must see, really but fun. see, you guys want to do unstable, so it's like saying, yeah, I like to buy a used car with bad tires and a bad tie rod because of the excitement that's unstable. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I don't see that. I'm sorry, but uh, now if you're testing it on a separate machine, that's cool, but. Uh, DT, you had fun, so the stream went on, and it did, but uh, mm. I don't know. I, mean, see, I normally have a, a Tylenol or a couple other bottles of aspirin, you know, so when you use... Uh, see, I used to take those when I did Distro Hop, but I had to cut back on the aspirin. It wasn't good for you, you know, but um, anyway, uh, toss excitement for me is like is like having a panel, Anarita. Okay. Whatever floats your boat, Anna Rita. Uh, how about excitement is having a stable panel doesn't crash? Now we're talking, right, Joe? <laughs> oh yeah. Or, um, or in Michael's Michael's view, steady, not stable. Remember, he had to, he had he has his definition of stable. Well, so. we'll have to get Michael on. I, I think he's on the same time zone as me. I think Michael Tunnell from TuxDigital uh, dot com forward slash toss today. No, I'm just kidding, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, Michael, Michael's uh, fun to talk to. That's right, Anarita. Stable is always good in your book. Yeah, well, look, anything stable, a stable OS, a stable car, a stable mind, a stable body, a stable relationship. You know, I used to, we'll talk about this before we get into Ubuntu Mate. Me and uh, Joe were talking off, off camera or off live, but uh, I used to distro hop a lot. Hi, Tony, welcome. I started with Ubuntu was my first date, as it were, with Linux back in 06. Time flies. And if it wasn't for Ubuntu, I wouldn't be here. It's that simple. So to the team at Canonical, past, present, future for Ubuntu, thank you uh, for convincing this Windows user uh, to try something different. And I know it sounds strange, but I'm still, I think, the only... Maybe not. I'm still the only Windows user on YouTube that promotes Linux, and I and I use Windows, although not primarily anymore. Um, but this month marks the um, a year birthday of this channel, March 29th. Tomorrow is my physical birthday. Uh, but um, one of the reasons why I'm here is because uh, quest for knowledge. Uh, you guys who want me to stay on and not quit and do more, meeting friends like Joe, I think is think is great. It's it's really more of a community. Um, I'd hope to continue. Um, was not expecting expecting to be here eight years later. It started off as a hobby. Yeah, I thought I would do it for a year, maybe two, and then you know can get off. But I met um, IG Infinite Galactic. I met uh, this week in Linux, the original this week in Linux, Jordan. Course, battery, and the list goes on and on. That's why I'm still here. Uh, DistroTube says Windows is unstable. 
I've never had a live stream freeze in Windows, so yeah. <laughs> uh, Windows is uh, very stable. Uh, the politics behind it is unstable or uncool, as it were. But Windows for me is stable. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but um, um, <laughs> thank you, Steve. Happy birthday, he says to me. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so eight years, I'm here. Uh, thanks to you. Um, I hope to continue. I would love to do upgrades to the channel if I can. That's why if you can support the channel below with PayPal. Uh, I used to have Patreon. I don't have it anymore. Too much politics with, with, with Patreon for me, it seems. So I stuck with PayPal. Uh, Joe, if you ever start a channel, let us. someone asked, do you have one dedicated viewer if you start a channel? I saw it. Matter of fact, above him, uh, if I'm saying this right, La Miso, La Wiso. I don't know. Sorry, I'm butchering. La Maui So Me is the guy. Person okay. The I yell. Apologies. And I asked if I was talking, so I didn't know if I was having an issue with my mic. But that's so I am awesome. Seventy. About, if, yeah. I, if, I am how, awesome. That that's how you say. It. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's the Italian thing. I'm always, you see, my hands are always flying when I'm. Talking. We talk like this. See. Hey, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, if, if you start doing videos, let me know. And if you set up a PayPal or Patreon, then we'll just go from there. These are two because you couldn't guess you couldn't get OBS to work in Windows. Um, it works for me. Works fine in Windows. In fact, it works better in. I dare say OBS works better in Windows than in Linux. It does. There's a couple extra features I can't get in Linux. Uh, one of the filters is gone in OBS. Uh, what, what, which one is it? The browser integration, browser plugin, it's gone in OBS and Linux. It's still in Windows. I'm not saying that once, you know, you should use one or the other. Uh, but OBS works for me and Windows never froze. I noticed that Tim Simmons, uh, he said his biggest issue with Linux is getting printers and scanners to work more scanners than printers, which I agree with that because I have a brother sitting here and I've commented about that, that I downloaded the drivers. I was able to get it to work for a period of time and the scanner yeah. quits. There's a site. Uh, it's an open site. It's openprinting.org. And if you go yes. slash printers, you can actually look up printer by model number yeah. and it'll have, if it's three tux penguins there, means... Yeah. You're gold, yeah. you're gold, and other ones will say it's a brick if it's a, which this technically was called a brick. It works great for yeah. printing, but the scanner doesn't work. So, and we, you've talked about that, Toss. Where I think you said HPs have done really well for you. I've tested a lot of. I've tested HP, Canon, Lexmark. I think another one, Epson. Mm -hmm. By far, for whatever reason, HP and Arita. Yes. HP, that's what I have now. It's a simple printer, wireless. I think I paid 50 bucks, maybe less. Works great in Linux. If not that, I would probably go with Epson. Um, you know, wireless, of course. Yeah, HP's because there's a dedicated app for uh, Linux, for HP in, in Linux, the HP Toolbox or something. It works awesome. So number one for Linux, Obviously, for me at least, based on my results, is HP. And then from there, I would say probably Epson number two. Um, now the rest, somebody mentioned Brothers No Good, maybe not. Kodak, I guess, is hard. I don't know. Uh, DistroTube says, Canon refuses to write Linux drivers. Uh, okay. Um, I got Canon's work, DT. Uh, if I remember, it took me a while to figure it out. That's why I, can, I cannot recommend it for newbies. I got it to work, but you're right. Canon does not out of the box support Linux, but I did get it to work and it was fine, but I didn't like the terminal commands and searching and I, it, it just wasn't for me. Uh, that's why I stick with HP. Um, if you're into printing else. labels yeah. too, and you don't want to buy toner or ink, do yeah. you want to use like a thermal printer? I have a Zebra 450 here, and it's actually I bought it used. It's it was a former uh, UPS printer because that's ah. what they yeah. use, and it works fantastic. Okay, and it's very simple. To, it's just a simple uh, uh, driver to just drop in. It recognizes it right away. You just plug in the USB and and go. I mean, it worked. The first time on one of my machines, I had to turn it off and on and cycle it. But after I got the initial setup, but I'm Mate, no problem. Plug it in, boom, it recognized it right away. So it was very simple. So, 
And a lot of people don't aren't aware that late yeah. that there are thermal printers out there that you don't yeah. have to pay for ink or whatever. And yeah, you know, if you're doing a lot of labels. Well, I used to have a stack. I had a collection of printers. Stack them up because mm. I refused to spend forty, fifty bucks for ink when I can buy a printer for the same price. So mm. instead of buying ink, I was buy printers. Now they say it you don't get the full cartridge of ink, but you know what? I don't do that much printing anyway. You know, I print occasionally here and there and the ink lasts a year well when it's time to buy ink I thought to myself $45 for ink or 40 or $50 for a printer boy that's a tough I want to go with the printer get I get new technology it's brand new with the warranty I stacked a collection of printers it's I know it sounds silly but I don't do a lot of printing you know I kept the Canon because that's also a fax machine that's the only one with the facts. So sometimes I'll use that just for the facts and not the print. So I kept that big beast monster, you know. Um, other than that, I'm not going to spend 50 bucks for ink. I'm not going to. Now, if it's a $500 printer, but if the printer is 50 bucks and the ink is almost just as much, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm sorry. So um, I see Lamy, Lama Wee, I'll just call it for short. He asked what are thermal printers. So basically, they're a printer that. So to speak, kind of. I don't want to say, use the word burns an image in, but it actually imprints the yeah. the yeah. label. I'm not exactly 100% clear on how it works, but I know it it will it will put in theory an image on the label, so you're not required to have a toner or ink. And I bought a thousand labels on eBay for the four by sixes for like um, I think it was 18 bucks. And okay. I've, okay. I've gone through, I'm just on my second roll now, and I do a, a fair amount of printing with it. Okay. You do have the smaller, like, address labels or things like that you can put in there, too. Yeah. So, yeah. They're, they're a good thing to have if, if you think that you're going to produce something like that on a regular okay. basis. Okay. Yeah. And the printer itself, I think there, it was normally brand new, 450 I bought this uh, with shipping, was 100 bucks. Wow. Okay. That's not yeah. bad at all. No. Um, you pronounced it. You pronounce his name. I am awesome. Seventy four or seventy eight. By the way, he just writes it differently. I think that's that's who we're talking oh, about. I'm if sorry. you spell it out, no, I I made the same mistake. Um, I am. Oh, right? no, I, I, I am awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the way. I don't know why. <laughs> Stop confusing us newbies, okay? Well, I took it as each individual word. No, no, you. I I did. Don't worry about it. Uh, all is forgiven. Uh, okay, don't worry about uh, Distro Tubes has followed you, but I guess, okay, I guess on Twitter. Qualis, 66. Qualis, welcome. Welcome to the live stream. But he's been a follower of the channel for a long, long I guess you used to follow us on Spatry, too, didn't you, Qualis, from a while back? Um, so, welcome to the stream. Uh, Anna Rita says, you pay $25 for your ink, and my printer has two, so 50 bucks. But this printer cost me 50 bucks, so better to buy a new printer. Because you still get a warranty. It's possible to buy the ink. Not that it's happened, but you can buy the ink, and then a month after the warranty expires, the thing breaks, so you have new ink with a broken printer. That happened to a friend of mine, a friend of mine, Amy. She bought new ink for an older printer. It was in storage. She couldn't get it to work, so she called me up. I went over to the house, and I said, Amy, it's the printer. Uh, she was trying to scan something, not, you know, not print from the computer. She has a Mac. And it wouldn't scan it, or it was in color, or this and that. So we reset it twice. I went troubleshooting. There's, there's something wrong with the printer. But she wasted forty dollars worth of ink. You know, now she doesn't. She, she, you know, she's not a geek or a person like us. It's, 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 it's not her fault. But it can happen. You could buy new ink, and the printer goes kafui, and you just threw away forty bucks. Now you got to spend another forty, fifty bucks for a printer. See what I'm saying? So anyway, um, Canon scam for printers. Uh, buy a printer and pay for drivers. Got to love the Canon business model. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. One thing uh, I think people don't realize about printers as well, too, which I found out kind of the hard way, and this particular way with the brother, is when they they advertise a certain amount of pages, Per cartridge, yes. But most printers come with what they call a starter cartridge. Yes. So you're not going to get a you're going to get a fraction of that. The other thing about like Brother, I believe it's the same holds true on some of the other manufacturers. 
it, the cartridges can actually be reset because it reads a dial in there, uh, and you can actually reset them to run longer. Okay. Um, you, could you refill them? Yeah, I found a, a supplier that refills them, yeah. and I, I can get them for ten bucks. I I bought one one time, and it didn't work. I found another supplier, and now it's working fine. Um, so don't always go by. There's chips in there and whatever you know. I mean, that's their way of. That's yeah. where they make their money is the refills. Yeah. So. Well, you know, look, I have no problem with you know making money to to stay in business, but when you're charging as much, almost as much for the ink as the hardware, I think that's doesn't sound right. It, it, to me, it doesn't, it doesn't sound right. But there's nothing wrong for making a profit. Um, I have a problem when I, f I feel like there's a sense of being taken advantage of, as it were. But mm -hmm. companies have a right to make a profit 100% behind you, but it doesn't sound right. That's my, my personal opinion. So, um, Well, another example, too, of this one, I went to buy yeah. my first refills on here, and I looked in the store locally, yeah. I tried to get the sales local. It was $75 for a cartridge. Okay. So I went online, and... Uh, Amazon had it for 45 like 44 something or whatever and then they I happen to look over in my I have a little clip over here for coupons that come into things and yes. I, they had sent me a 25% off so I went in there not only did they price match but then I got the coupon on top but I bought two cartridges for 70 bucks so okay. I asked them I said if you yeah. can do a price match yeah at 40 something dollars right out of the gate why don't you just lower it to that and keep the sales local right. and sell it Right. They said, because most people don't ask, and because we can, oh. and people pay it. And okay. I said, well, you know what? Okay. I don't feel guilty anymore about buying online, and if that's right. going to be your, your mentality. Well, I don't, you know, maybe some companies can't afford to match the lower prices, of, but I'm willing to bet, and I'm one of them, I don't mind spending a little bit more in the store to get that one-on-one -on -one interaction with a human being, ask a question. If it's defective, I can bring it back and not mailing it back. You know what I mean? I think that's worth a few extra, but a few extra dollars, not a whole much. I don't know what your sense is on that, Joe, but um, I don't mind spending a little bit more to keep a local business in business, as it were. Um, you know, I went shopping for this boombox I showed you for my birthday, and uh, I had to go online. There was nothing here locally that that sounded the way I wanted it for a boom box to sound. I had, I had to go on eBay, actually. Amazon was sold out. I guess that shows that it's a good boom box. But yeah, I don't mind spending a few dollars on a local business versus online. If I can get it now, I don't have to wait two days or a week. And if it's defective or something, I can just take it back to the local store versus package it, you know, package it ship it out, FedEx store, UPS. I mean, that's a hassle. Not that it happens all the time, but I know you know we go back to what's reasonable. You know what's you know what's fair. So, um, well, hello, Metal right. Lord. You know, that was my point. I mean, they were thirty dollars plus over what the uh, price match was. Okay, that's a bit high. Yeah. You know, five ten bucks, and if it's right then and there, and you want it now. Okay, right. you know, thirty bucks, you're probably probably a little high. Um, Okay, so what does that mean? My wife just told me once, if well, if you want to pay less for ink, buy an expensive printer. <laughs> buy a cheap gal, what could I say? Okay. Uh, HP business model was giving away printers and make money on the ink. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, my 12-year-old niece watched Big Daddy's podcast one night. She says she didn't understand anything. <laughs> Those other guys are just as nerdy as me. Most of them are just as bald. <laughs> oh my! Oh, well, she All shouldn't right. feel bad. We have so I have some people or friends of mine that watch it when they need to fall asleep. So, <laughs> well, there were there were there was you know sometimes we will get into heavy conversations like with sixteen people on a show, and maybe it is a bit much. But you know, for us who get into it, it's okay. You know. Um, all right, we are 23 minutes into this special podcast. Once again, uh, you're watching a special presentation with my very first guest on this show, Joe Panico from Wisconsin. If anybody's watching from Wisconsin, don't be shy. Say hello. Say cheese. Ha ha. <laughs> um, so anyway, we're going to talk about what I consider to be the Linux gold standard. Um, 
at least for beginners. Uh, I know Joe uses it. I don't know if he considers it a Linux gold standard. I'm sure he has. I'm sure he has a high standard, uh, a high um, reckoning or a high feeling towards you know positive feeling for Ubuntu Mate. But uh, you know, I started. I started with Linux back in 06 with Ubuntu. Back then, Linux in general wasn't ready for prime time, especially for beginners. A lot has changed over the years. When I started this channel in 2010, I was still distro hopping, Linux, Mint, Ubuntu. I stuck with the Ubuntu Debian base because they seemed more user-friendly, more comfortable for me. Zorin, still around. They have a great, nice-looking, um, you know, uh, a couple versions of Zorin. There's the core version with GNOME. If you want something lighter, there's Zorin Lite. Uh, but, uh, yeah, distro to gold standard Gen 2. God bless you. No, um, but anyway, <laughs> but um, so to make a long story short, after distro hopping for years, literally years and hundreds of bootable discs, CDs and DVDs back then, I've come to the conclusion, well, came conclusion back then, that of the hundreds and hundreds of distros and forks offshoots, there's only a handful that really are solid. Um, Linux Mint. Zorin, Ubuntu Mate, and a few others MX-17. So that's why I don't distro hop as much as I used to because in the end, Joe, I felt like I was going in circles. Oh, this looks better than that. Oh, but that doesn't work. Oh, that's unstable. Oh, a bug here, a crap. Enough, enough, I, I told myself. So, you know, as a Windows user promoting Linux, I had to call it as I see it. And to be fair to the other, quote, newbies out there and say, look, Linux is not for everybody. You may not even know it. It is a viable alternative for Windows that you may not have heard of. Let me give you my honest experience, uh, my results from my years of testing. And there's a handful that really are truly good nowadays, not 10 years ago, but a lot has changed. And with me, Ubuntu Mate, first of all, hats off to the guy who runs it, Martin Wimpress. I think they call him Wimpy. Um, as a matter of affection. Uh, so Martin Wimpress, thank you. He created Ubuntu Mate. Was it, I think it's three years now, maybe more. Um, you know, he took, he took what was really good with Ubuntu with the old uh, GNOME 2 look uh, back when I started. And a lot of people didn't like the Unity desktop. I thought it was okay. People don't like GNOME. It's okay. Uh, but I thought Unity was better in my opinion. But... I think the old single panel look as it was back then, or dual panel, top and bottom with, with the drop down menus, there's something to be said for simplicity and stability out of the box. And you can do all the distro hopping you can, but if you're worried about stability, bugs, freezing on live streams, <laughs> and stuff like that, you know, I mean, it's one thing if you're testing to get the feel for something, but it's a headache. I mean, truly, it can be, actually, here we go again, more bugs than this, because I try some different. But with Ubuntu Mate, I don't have those surprises, Joe. It just works out of the box. Now, it can be said it looks too plain vanilla looking out of the box. Okay, but you can change it. Any Linux can be changed how it looks. Any Linux can be customized very easily uh, as opposed to Windows. It's just the way Linux is. The heart of Linux is making it your own, no matter what you choose. But if you don't have that, it's kind of like building a house. If you don't have the stable foundation, the, the concrete, the foundation, the drainage, if you don't have that, you can have all the fancy schmazzy house you like. If that, if that foundation is like a wave pool, <laughs> you know, like this, it's going to crumble. And a Linux system, any system based off of Linux, if it's not stable, I don't care how it looks. Because uh, if know, it's well, anyway, that's my thought. So, well, and the one the, the thing that holds true about that is, if, well, first of all, we've talked about this too on Bit a lot and yeah. know, Big Day Linux. And the thing is, is you know, as I'm looking at Derek's comics too, about you know, we always see here there's too many distros. I think if you really look at in the grand scheme of the <clears> amount <throat> of distros that are available out there, yeah. yeah, it truly comes down to just a handful of what people really like. 
I mean, English Bobby. <coughs> yeah. Zeller, yeah. Pepper yeah. Bands to the 10th power. You know, MX-17 is a fabulous distro. Yes. But it also comes back to what works yeah. on your hardware. Um, I've talked about this before. I've got a laptop sitting here. I bought four specifically testing distros when I get yes. involved. Instead of, it's kind of like what you said. Um, I got to a point where I kind of got sick of switching. And I thought maybe there's yes. something that's a little bit better. And one of the things I love about MX-17 and Peppermint is they're lightning fast yeah. soulless. Yes. But unfortunately, there are certain distros that just don't get along with certain hardware. And the sad part is, is yeah. there's some people that have similar hardware and they don't have problems with it. I, I have it's no It's possible. Opinion, you know, so, but Mint, you know, was pretty good for me. I think that's probably the one because like Ubuntu, the name Ubuntu, most people recognize that. Mint tends to be the next mm -hmm. most popular because mm -hmm. it's out there more. But I think Mate's been up and coming for what it is. And like I said, MX and Peppermint. Uh, Peppermint and MX on this laptop run fantastic. I actually still have Windows on here. I took it off and to get rid of the bloatware okay. and I put it back on thinking if I ever get rid of it, I'll still have it. But I'm going to partition it down. It's a terabyte drive and I'm going to use the rest of the space for running other distros. I'm going to leave my main system alone because much like what you said is yeah. I'm kind of burned out on yeah, yeah, messing yeah. with this, especially yeah. when you get a bunch of software loaded, you get yes. drivers in, you get everything the way you want. And yes, could you clone it? Absolutely. Yes. The reality of it is, is who wants to go through that trouble anyway if you've got something that's working? Yeah. And Mate for me is just, it's if you want it to look like Windows, you can make it look exactly like Windows if you want. It yes. work, the keystrokes are the same. You know, the Windows button brings open the menu, you know. And if you look at Windows 10, there were a lot of people saying that Windows 10 was ripping off Kubuntu because if you look at Kubuntu, uh, there was a lot of similarity to yeah. the tiles and things like that. And then I did see some comments in here about, you know, uh, Metal Lord said that, you know, the discussion's been that Microsoft's buying into uh, Linux. They are to a point. Is it going to, you know, I don't trust them as far as I can throw them because, yeah. of, you know, they're, yeah. they do tend to trademark and proprietary. But the, this is one, this community, I don't think people realize how large it really is. Yeah. Microsoft may be a corporation. Yeah. But the Linux community and the developers, and, I mean, it's worldwide. It's its a yeah. lot larger than people realize, yeah. even than yes. the Microsoft Corporation. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, Windows 10, if it didn't have the politics the way it is behind it with telemetry, data sharing, data mining, you know, not being transparent, if it didn't, if Windows 10 was like Windows 7, where it was a lot more private. It's a hard OS, a, hard, a, a difficult OS to beat. It is, because it works out of the box. It really, at least for me and my multiple machines here, upgrading from 7, 8 to 10. Gaming is terrific. Everything works. I don't have surprises when installing software or, or like video drivers. I think the update process still is archaic. Reboot. Download, reboot, back and forth, ba boom, ba bing, ba bing, ba boom, and that drives me nuts. But they weren't transparent and clear up front with how they share share uh, your information, and that's a big no-no. Uh, having users forced to upgrade was a big no-no. I think they admitted it finally was wrong, I mean, but that's just common sense. Where's your freaking head, Microsoft? Don't force a user to do something. Anyway, if that was not the issue, Joe, say if we had Windows 7, then straight to Windows 10, with the same security as it were, in Windows 10 as we had in 7, it would be a hard OS to beat, in my opinion, because it works out of the box, but people, got, people want more privacy, and we'll talk about that in a minute with Facebook. But that's how I see Windows 10. The core technology, Windows 10, is fine. It works. It's the, uh, it's the politics that does not work with a lot of people. Is, is, is that how you see it? I, I agree. I think it's, I do think that it's a, a good OS. Um, the one thing that I, I may beg to disagree with a little bit, and it's only because of experience, yeah. your experience based on other people's I've seen. And again, being a computer tech, I, I see it with other people and I've yeah. had to repair systems. Yeah. 
the update process, I, like my systems I have here, the couple that I keep it on, and the only reason I have it on those is because I have to stay abreast of it to be able to yeah. fix somebody's computer. Um, the hard drive is always running, forever running, and there's always something going on in the background. And I've had businesses that have gotten knocked offline because of an update. You know, yeah. it breaks. The, so when people say that Linux is always breaking things, well, that holds true with Microsoft too. The downside mm -hmm. to like Windows 7 in today's world is they backported that telemetry into yeah. Windows 7 now. Okay. So they are still doing the uh, data tracking and, or yes. mining, let's call it for what okay. it is. Okay. Okay. And the keyboard strokes and things like okay. that. So you type in a password to your bank and you think you're being secure, and Microsoft got it. And that's what actually gave me the bad taste in my mouth for it. And that's what yes. actually pushed me over the edge to say, I'm running yeah. this. Yeah. 99.9% .9 of my time. Sure. I've yeah. talked about it on the other show for the people that, that have been in here. A lot of them have and know this already. Others that may be in here that don't know. I have a Windows machine here for my accounting because I have to use QuickBooks. But this machine never, ever goes online. Okay. So the reality of this is if they kill you know, Windows 7, mm -hmm. I can still run it on here. Unless yeah. something happens to the machine, and I, you know, there's ways of activating it if you need to. Okay. Um, but you know, it's it's when I say activating, it's reactivating the copy I have with the license I have. Okay. Uh, I'm not I'm not by any means advocating you know piracy. Okay. Um, but I, I can actually run this. I figure if it's offline, it should never break unless I have a piece of hardware and if okay. it does the job I need it to do. Okay. Then it's fine, and it would be the same thing with Windows 10. Fair enough. Uh, but no, the, it's, that's the that's a fair statement. System. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. I think the operating system is a phenomenal yeah. OS. Yeah. Uh, when I feel like gaming, it's hard to beat Windows. It just is. I mean, I game in Linux, but Windows. I love my um, uh, racing, not Need for Speed, Asphalt 8 Airboard. <laughs> it just rocks. Yeah. You know, some nights, days, I'm, I'm bad. I'll get on it. And I'm whacking people off the road, road rage. That's it. Keep on texting. That's right. You've got mail. I'm just whacking these cars off the road. It's fun. And Windows is great. E even on an old dual core machine, man, with four gigs of RAM, gaming is terrific. It's hard. It's hard to believe. But Windows has the market cornered when it comes to gaming. Um, of course, when it comes to Linux, here I am using my backup PC to do this live stream. Seven-year-old machine. Linux works great. Imagine that. So hats off to all the developers. Uh, but yeah, Windows, if they didn't have that mess of telemetry issue, it would be a hard OS to beat. But that's why we use Linux sometimes, to feel more secure and more private. Um, but again, getting back to Ubuntu Mate, that is, that's why it is my Linux gold standard. It just works out of the box. It's simple. It's lightweight, fast, stable. You can customize it if you want to. It's it's my number one choice right now for newbies. There's a lot of other good ones out there. You know, Linux Mint, MX17, Peppermint. But for me, as a whole, taking the whole package out of the box, Martin Wimpress, you're okay. So that's my thought on Ubuntu Mate. We have Cody Commander is in the house. Welcome, Coding from Florida. She says, I don't want Microsoft having my bank info. I'll be generous. Support Microsoft. Donate some more to them. Come on. <laughs> Copy left an arrangement where software, this is from DistroTube, and where software just may be used, modified, distributed freely. That is true. Joe, I think we had somebody new to the stream. Uh, read something? I didn't see it. Uh, okay. If you're uh, here, here we, uh, Red Red Robo's Workshop. I'm I'm tr I'm trying not to miss anybody. Uh, I think many of these shows are essentially different theming and packages. Few are really different under the hood. That is true. Right. If it's your first time to the stream, I think it is welcome. And I do have a custom on my channel. Everybody say hello to the newbie, as it were. If you're not new to the channel, we're gonna say hello anyway, right, guys? So please, everybody, welcome Red Robos Robos Workshop. Colin, hello, welcome. Uh, let's see here. Coding says it's crazy. I know Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple know too much. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, coding, well, would I you like? Co 
Coding, would you like to be on the stream? Surprise, this is your chance. I know you're into uh, Ubuntu and coding and stuff like that. Uh, send me an email, I'll send you the uh, link if you want to. I know we spoke about it before, so uh, me and Joe is just chilling tonight. So, And how are things in Florida? Um, welcome, Red. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she pointed out, too, which, you know, like she, she feels it's better for gaming. I think it depends on what games you're running because mm -hmm. I am perfectly happy with my ATS, ETS. Uh, yeah. Um, God, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, CSGO, mm -hmm. you know, Rocket League, that kind of thing. They run fantastic on here. And I was a big Battlefield gamer, and I had it on here, and I wasn't playing it. And I thought, mm -hmm. well, you know, so they say the, the AAA, but it's evolving. It's one more thing that's evolving. Yeah. The same thing, I, and I've said this before, too. I think one of the, the downsides to how Linux is represented is everybody thinks of it because it was always presented that way for so long was, it works great on older machines. Well, it works great on new hardware too, uh, as long as the comp proprietary companies don't lock something out. Uh, it does work great, and I also think that it has to be presented in a different light, mm -hmm. which I think that is starting to happen uh, more and more. And that's one of the things that came out of what you just mentioned about Microsoft's methods of getting Windows 10 updated for people. Is it pushed more people over to Linux? Yes. Um, so their loss was our gain in that particular instant. Hmm. So. One of the last um, news nonsense we did, I did with Spatry, and somebody said somebody bring Spatry back for the. Uh, I'm all for that. I hope he's okay, Spatry. If you ever watch this piece, my friend. Um, yeah. Last, uh, no, the year before last, whenever we were talking, but there was a live. Weathercast newscast. <laughs> you may have seen it. And today, you know, she's got the green screen. She's looking. And today's weather forecast will be the highs. Oh, look, there's an upgrade to Windows 10 that popped up on live TV. <laughs> Microsoft, dudes, forget about it. I always say you'll never get a second chance to make a good first impression. And Microsoft, you botched. Now they later admitted it. And somebody actually sued Microsoft, and that person won. You know? People know, you know, we know Windows works. For people who are comfortable, even now with Windows for gaming, whatever, you don't have to force it down our throats. We know it works. Don't force them to upgrade, you know? Anyway, I just want to get that out of the way. Um, but I do feel more secure in Linux uh, up to a point. I do feel more private in Linux. A quick poll: Does anybody consider? Now we'll go, we'll we'll get get into the Facebook thing here in a second. Does anybody here? A quick poll: Feel more secure in Linux versus Windows in general? I know you know you get on the web and Facebook and all that, but does anybody here in general feel more securely using Linux um, as a whole versus Windows? I'm just I'm just, I'm just out of curiosity. Um, Metal Lord, yep, yes, okay. I do my banking only in Linux. Um, yeah. Well, we one of the ways to do that too is if you don't want to do it on your everyday distro, is you can run a live uh, version on either USB or DVD and plug it in. And when yes. you get out, you're done. And it's, you know, you just boot into that as you're using yeah. it. It doesn't yeah. remember anything. Yeah. Or yeah, you yeah. do one of these. Yeah. yeah. A little Raspberry Pi. Show them your new toy, Joe. Yeah, I, I, Michael Tanell had uh, Tux Digital had mentioned this on Big mm -hmm. Daddy last week, and uh, I thought, you know, I've had a bug to go buy one of these for a while. So I looked on Amazon, and they had one for sixty nine dollars. The full entire kit. It had the charger. It had the distro uh, loaded. They called it noobs of all things, which mm -hmm. it's new out of the box, basically uh -huh. system and. What's nice about that is that Raspbian, which is the recommended or beginner's uh, distro for this, mm -hmm. but if you set up your wireless, it would actually bring a list of other things. You, if you want to run it as just strictly a Kodi box, there's a Kodi uh, system that would run on this. Or 
Um, there actually was Windows 10 Core, if you can believe it. But then what I'm going to do is, because there's a, in the back here is a little micro uh, SD card. It's got to be a class 10. Uh, yeah. I am going to load up. I'm going to get another one. I thought I had one here. If I can't find it, I'm going to buy another one and put uh, Ubuntu Mate for Raspberry on here. And yeah. it's it's literally credit card size. And nice. this this isn't how it came. It actually the board's in there. This yeah, yeah. Piece inside of here comes out. So you slip the board. You slip the board in. And it, it literally the heat sinks are the only two things I had to put on it. Slip it in the panel. Lock it in. Put the cover back on. And I'm ready to go. Um, the power cord is literally, as yeah. long as you have the right voltage, is basically yeah. a cell phone cord. Um, and the only thing I we talked about before the show is I don't care that for that there's not an on-off button yeah. when you plug it in, it boots up, and then you you have to do the normal right. shutdown mode to shut it down, or you just leave it running. And right, done right. With it. It's not like there's fans or anything. And I had it running for a good half an hour or more when I first loaded it up and booted it the other day and it, it barely got a little warm so it's not mm -hmm. like it takes a lot of heat mm -hmm. i have a, a large 40 screen 40 inch screen it's an older tv in the back room that i actually run peppermint on as my home entertainment but my grandchildren always mess with that so i'm thinking i'm gonna maybe velcro this or just set it in the back of the tv where mm -hmm. you can't see it and what's nice about it is it actually has a large device or tv mode to bring everything up nice and big uh, so this, it's, it's what I saw first impressions. I'm loving it. Now, is it lightning fast? No. Yeah. But is it snappy? Yeah. You nice. know, and I think, you know, if you just leave it alone and run it for what it is, it also comes with an HDMI cord. Nice. I mean, the whole thing came in, in this box. I don't know if there's cords in here or whatever. That's yeah, a yeah. box. One had the case, one had the board, and the other one, you know, had what, the, the uh, power piece in it. So, but it's... It's a nice little device. Nice. Um, and these things are designed. There's actually pins inside here that you can't see that they're designed to run all kinds of things. You could expand off of them. There's, there's, there's a, if you, if you're that interested, just look them up online. You know, watch some, I watch some YouTube yeah. videos on them and there's quite a good uh, few tutorials, but even the Raspberry Pi website, uh, they have a whole video tutorial page and they actually have a YouTube channel and um, it's, it's really kind of a neat device. If you, you know, for under a hundred, the, the, actually the, the Raspberry Pi itself is 35 bucks. Okay. So if you want to run it and don't care that it has a case, you can literally, you, know, you have a charge cord that meets the voltage. You could run it without nice. even having to spend more money on that for it and have nice. a little bit of fun. Nice. Well, Joe showed me his little toy. I bought myself my own little toy for my birthday. Let me show you. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> my boom box my first boom box in 20 plus years yes that is a subwoofer there in the middle this thing's a beast um anyway i like to uh as i shaving showering occasionally distro hopping i'll play that sucker crank up the subwoofer man and it's it's awesome so that was my happy birthday to myself so uh anyway Yes, Red Rubbo, less chance of virus. Although I think Windows 10 in terms of virus is pretty secure. It is unanimous. People feel more secure and private in Linux. No surprise there. So, uh, Colin says, <laughs> I thought you said little toy. Yeah, Colin, yeah. <laughs> Derek's comment, Boombox is awesome, but Joe's Pie will hold more music. <laughs> uh, well, this has a USB port to plug in music from a USB, like this here. Just oh, nice. plug it right in. So, uh, hey, it has Bluetooth. Okay, fine. Joe wins. Jeez. <laughs> Spoil my birthday. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I had to. Um, I'm always I'm always playing music, you know, in the garage or whatever. And I had a Magnavox. It lasted plus 20 years. It's I'm, I'm not complaining. It was time. But a lot of these boom boxes don't boom. This one does. Um how to get it on eBay? Amazon was sold out, so I would say check out Amazon, but it ain't there. Anyway, uh, Tosh, just buy a Water Pro little radio for your shower. You know they make uh, Bluetooth shower heads now. Why not? Um, I hope they really are waterproof. <laughs> um. 
Windows has a lot of cash, but not a lot of people who work on it compared to Linux. I don't know about that, which has millions of people working. Okay, all right. Uh, oh, yeah, the music player. DistroTube's favorite music player is Dead Beef. Oh, these names. <laughs> I'm sorry. I prefer a live iguana music player. I don't like nothing dead playing my music, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I am awesome says was didn't know my birthday. Yes, yeah, my birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday to myself tomorrow, and happy birthday to this channel this month at year. So thank you for allowing me the privilege of sharing my knowledge with you guys. Uh, coding says you listen to music on your phone. I do sometimes. I have a. I'll give a plug to HTC. This is the HTC Max. You can see the there's a reflection of my Bluetooth there with the blue circle, but the speaker top. And at the bottom, so if I pan back, the speaker here and here, wide speakers, and these are awesome. This is still the best sounding phone in the market. It's five years old. It's old, I know. But in terms of sound, I think it's still the best, if not one of the best still, for, you know, playing music. Um, thank you, Coding. Happy birthday to me. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Colin. I was, um, and we'll go into the privacy thing here at Facebook and stuff. I was going to do a, uh, I was going to do a, uh, thank you, Tony. Thank you, all of you. Um, there's no, there's nowhere else I want to be tonight than with you guys. Now for the weekend, who knows where I'll be. Uh, but I was going to do a, a so-called toast-a-thon tonight, a fundraiser for the channel to do some upgrades and share with you my dad's, a teaser trailer of my dad's film. But maybe next Friday. I was leery I wouldn't stay up tonight three, four, five, six hours by myself. But Joe says he's a night owl, so we'll see maybe next week. So, um. Yeah, this is, it's, it can be a lot of fun to just talk shop with this stuff if you're into it. But then if you just need something to put you to sleep, then just listen in. Well, <laughs> you know what? These, these type of shows, I go by the feel usually either of the chat and or how our conversation goes in the topic in general. If there's more people coming on, then obviously we stay on longer. But um, with the news and nonsense I did with Spatchery, we purposely kept it shorter just to get to the, the regular technical news stuff and then straight to the jokes, bang, 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 and then stop. I think it has more of an effect that way versus drag. Now, sometimes if you have five, six, seven guests, Obviously, you can't do that in a half hour because each person needs a chance to speak their mind, you know. Um, but actually, all my podcasts, I just went with the flow. My very first podcast was almost two hours. It just flowed. It was with IG, and it just we just went with the flow. It was, it was actually more than that when we talked before and after uh, the recording. It was nuts. But anyway, um, the LG V30 has great audio. Okay. Thank you. I am awesome. All right. So we talked about privacy. Okay. So again, with Ubuntu Mate, it was, it still is my number one choice for newbies. Check it out. It is UbuntuMate.org. Again, hats off to Martin Wimpress. Uh, yes, I am 21, Anna, plus tax. Lots and lots of tax. <laughs> um, UbuntuMate.org. Check it out. Okay, Adam Vitali, welcome. Welcome. Privacy, Joe. Um, we talk about privacy, Linux and Windows. Fair enough, Linux is better. But once we get on the web, does privacy exist? Does true privacy exist? I don't think so. Um, you know, Facebook is apologizing. They, <laughs> yeah. People laughing at my joke, plus tax. Lots of tax. We're being taxed to death, Congress. But no. Um, we get on the web. You expect privacy. You don't get it. I mean, I already knew it. Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, he says he's not comfortable talking about this. It's your company. Hello? You have to talk about it, in my opinion. Not that it changes anything. But, you know, he apologizes. These other companies apologize. You know, so-and-so was hacked. Yahoo was hacked. I'm like, I want to tell these guys, stop it. Just stop it. You want to know why I, I say that? You make money selling information. Let's be honest. You make money through advertising. 
selling people's information. That's how you stay in business. Just be honest about it. Let it all out. You'll feel better. <laughs> you know, be honest with the people and stop apologizing because it's what you do. That's strictly my opinion. Uh, but that being said, it's not nice. It's not good. A lot of people are ticked off. I guess a lot of people will dump or will just delete their accounts on Facebook. But I guess it can take up to 90 days to delete your account on Facebook. Is this true? Why? Hmm. Me and Switch to Linux did a podcast. Can you delete yourself off the internet? No. Not completely. I think it's impossible. You can't now you can't delete email accounts, fake accounts, email accounts, delete Facebook, Twitter. But once it's there, it's there. Um, you know, the internet is a great tool. Gathering information, talking like this, solving an issue, solving problems, finding a solution to fix something, getting in touch with friends, family. Uh but it is a 24-hour <laughs> open sewer system. The floodgates of data just... <sighs> How do you see it, Joe? Well, I see it very much the same way. I, I'm tired of these companies, individuals, whoever they are, they get caught with their hand in the cookie jar, and then all of a sudden they're apologizing for something they were hoping to get away with for as long as yes. they can. Yeah. Because that's what it comes down to. And... The minute, you know, think about when the internet first started and you typed an address, you put the www in front of it, which still works, but most times nowadays you don't have to do it anymore. But what does that mean? World Wide Web. So you just mm -hmm. literally opened your front door and said, everybody come in. And the minute you put anything on there, you're creating a footprint. Yes. The data gets out there. There's no pulling it back. It doesn't matter what you do. It's gone. And most people don't think of that. And I hate to say this, I look at this, and I'm included in this to some extent because recently I started to get a little frustrated with Facebook and I was going to, I did actually for 24 hours, just at least you know disable my account just to okay. see how long I could stay off it. And yeah. then all of a sudden I felt like somebody cut off my right arm because I was so used to doing this. It yeah, becomes yeah. an addiction to it at some yeah. point, I think, because that's how you... Uh, interact with people's lives that maybe you haven't mm -hmm. seen for 35 years or, or longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, 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 there's a lot of good things that can come from it, but there's also a lot of bad. And w the thing I don't like, along with cookies when you're on the internet, that's, that's how many times have you gone to look on Amazon and then you mm -hmm. turn around and you go to Facebook and all of a sudden there's ads popping up in the yeah, corner? Yeah, yeah. Or, you have a conversation, and it doesn't just hold true for Facebook. It holds true for these phones. Right. Uh, I'll give an example. My wife didn't really think much of it. Or be, I don't know if she, not, that she didn't believe me, Yeah. but it didn't ring true until it happened to her. I've been saying all along that even when these things are shut off, they're listening, and she happened to have a conversation uh, about buying a music box for my granddaughter, and 10 minutes yeah. later on her phone and on Facebook, ads pop up for music Wow. Box. You know, so you no. Know, the sad part is, is the only way you're truly going to get away from invasion of privacy is go back to the old school way. If you remember, you know, to me, half the fun of buying a computer in the early days was you bought it, you bought the software you wanted for it, yeah, and you did what you were going to do on it, and you weren't connected to the world, yeah. And the next updated system came yeah, out, yeah. and you bought it, and you did it, and your phones were. You know, that thing that hung on a wall with a cord attached, you can only walk so far away from it, or you put a speaker to be able to talk throughout the room. So you have to go back to what is considered in today's world might be primitive type days if you really want to get away from it. Um, I never thought in this entire world that my father at 85 years old would ever get a piece of electronics. And he recently, mm. this past year, bought a uh, iPad because of the great nice. grandchildren, because yeah. he can at least see them uh -huh. face to face now, sure. he's 1300 miles away. So that's the good yeah. side of it. Uh, but yes, I agree totally with you. You know, it's 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 opening. I look at it as I've always even the same thing with when I'm in my tech business telling people. I said you could be behind a 16 inch vault door, and you're as secure as it is. But the minute you open that door, you've just become vulnerable. And it's the same thing with connecting to the internet. You're mm -hmm. as Secure as you can be on your computer until the minute you 
yes. connect onto that internet. And now you've just taken, you're taking your life in your hands, your risk. So you, yeah, yeah. how you, yeah. well, I've often said too that basically the person who gets a lot of viruses or has problems with computers are usually their own worst enemies because it's yeah. their use of the system or the machine that's that's assisting that. It's yes. not always entirely your fault, but it's, it's being, and pardon the phrase, a little naive or ignorant to how it works if it's your, you know, still new to using this or you just the temptation of hey it looks like somebody sent me an email that's a friend of mine mm -hmm. and you know and you just want to click on it mm -hmm. because of the curiosity but i will tell you this much most people don't realize it's a two-step process mm -hmm. because you get the email or you get there's a, um, a website you go to you click on the initial link there's one and it says yes get you your message, whatever, and then yes. it takes you to the next one, and that's what does it. It's not usually right. instantaneous. Yeah. Normally, now, that said, these vulnerabilities like Spectre and Meltdown and whatever, that's a different animal. Um, because yeah. you're on the Internet, hmm. you know, it, it. there's open gateways that even software won't control. So that's a whole, that's yeah. a hardware thing, and it's a whole right. different animal. Yeah. So you don't have to click on anything with that other than right. just being active on the web. Well, that's the flaw in the hardware, not so much exactly. in the Exactly. So the that's web. my point yeah. is yeah. It, that doesn't mean that people won't start having problems. Right. Now that they've let the cat out of their bag, it wasn't a problem for 20 some years because nobody talked about it. Now they talked right. about it. And of course, the anticipation of future problems. So it's going to be a few years before the hardware is locked right. down before anybody doesn't see that. So the point is, is you know, in that case, it's not necessarily somebody's fault who's using the web. But you're right about security, and Facebook is no different than any other large company that they got caught with their hand in the, their hand in the cookie jar because they got right. caught doing. Um, we always blame Microsoft, but it's no different yeah. than Microsoft right. did. Yes, but this time they got caught. Right. Now going, oh, and him not wanting to talk about it. That's just him not. He wanting knows. To mess up he knows. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, you know. Back in the early days of the internet, you know, we who thought about it really? Oh, oh, cool! The internet's cool. Oh, that's that sounds cool. You know, you got mail and stuff like that. But who knew it would get to this? Um, you know, I was watching the uh, the season or the series finale of the X Files Wednesday night. Great series, and one of the reasons why that show has lasted this long is because. You know, it's it's because that show started in '93, right at the dawn of the beginning of the explosion of the web and conspiracy theories and information. So their timing was good, you know. And I think that's why the show was popular because a lot of people didn't yet know about the web or the potential of the web to sharing information, false information, conspiracy theories, UFOs, monsters, and that show did it. Uh, but who knew that what they were showing in fiction is now real life? You know, look at the show uh, Knight Rider back in the 80s. Self-driving cars, talking cars. Now they're everywhere. Well, almost everywhere. That is the explosion of technology. And uh, it's not all good. You know, I think technology in some cases is tearing, is stealing our humanity. Uh, look at texting and driving. Do we control the technology, or 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 does it control uh, us? You know, can you live without your cell phone? Can you live without Facebook? Um, there are times I left the house to go to Kroger's shopping. I forgot my phone. I'm like, oh my god, I left my left foot at home. <laughs> you know, but I thought now. Luckily, I'm close to the to the store I can practically walk there if I'm buying just the one bag if I'm buying a whole you know bucket load of groceries I'm going to drive but it's like no nah, you know what I don't need my phone to go to the grocery store if I get a flat tire car breaks down I'm not that far from home anyway so obviously you know if you're taking a long trip you, you could have the phone for security and all that okay all right you know emergency fine but I, I, I don't like that feeling, Joe, when, when I leave the house. Oh, my God. Did I leave my left toe at home? <laughs> you know, I don't like that feeling. I, I don't know it's about you, but it's, it's, it's yeah. not good. 
No, it's a it's a security thing in the sense that if God forbid something happens, you have the ability to call for help or whatever too. I think that's part of it as well. But you're right; you feel like your arm was cut off. Um, you know, the internet in the early days, I think part of you know, yeah. it wasn't necessarily geared toward data mining like it is now. Right. Number, one. Yeah. Number two, who could afford to be on it? If you remember right, you know AOL and that. And yeah. Was, you know, you, yeah. you prodigy, you paid. Yeah, the yeah. Initial fee plus a per minute charge, right, and right. it can get pretty costly. But the other thing too that a lot of people don't think about is you have smart TVs, smart refrigerators. It's, the TVs have been known to listen in, but your vehicles, the newer cars, they're all. Matter of fact, my Dodge Ram pickup had a patch. I talked about this before that the only yeah. way the patch came out was because. Some white hat hackers went viral because Chrysler wasn't listening uh, to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hacked yeah. Jeep to show them this, and it's yeah. running Linux uh-huh. of all things. But you, you, even the conversations you have in your vehicle, there's ears because everything is satellite, and you know. So it is a much, much different world. You know, it's funny you talk yes. about the early days. Whoever thought Flash Gordon hover, you know, hovercrafts. Yes. You know, that's when I was a kid. Right. I mean, I'm really dating myself now. But that's all, or the Jetsons. Who'd ever thought yeah. you could talk into a screen like this and have conversations? It's almost you know? like it's magic. <laughs> yeah. You know, I got my first cell phone in 97 in Orlando. It was like, it was an NEC. I, I don't even know if they're still around. But I mean, it was a half a brick. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. a full brick phone. I could drop that, whack somebody over the head, still work. Yeah. Then the phones got smaller. Then I got a Nokia, like a candy bar with the little stubby antenna, you know. With the explosion really started. We got hits of it in the 90s with X-Files, but it really started around the year 2000 and beyond. That it, then 2007 with, with the iPhone, the smartphone. But the explosion, you know, that's why there are some theories that we got technologies, reverse engineering from alien craft. Don't know. As I suppose it's possible. Coding uh, made, made a joke. She says, by, by your command. For those of us who remember the original Battlestar and the Cylons, by your command. You know, <laughs> yes, Coding, I, I, I know. Coding says, I was driving to Miami and my phone lost all connectivity, no GPS, calls internet. I do not know my way around Miami. I don't speak Spanish. There was a lot of traffic there. <laughs> well, you could have said, I'm, I'm looking for total three, man. I'm lost, okay? Yeah. No, but... Uh, um, yeah, I mean, she said she was gonna fix her hair when you invited her. I'm a I know, <laughs> Cody. You're still we'll, 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 us guys are waiting for the lady to come on, but no, fine, you know. Uh, uh, we still have people coming on, so uh, Joe, we can we can keep on going if you want. Um, a little longer, sure. I, I don't want to cut off anybody, yeah, okay. Uh, Cody got your fir- first phone in 97. Yeah, that's when I got mine, I think. Hi, Nikolai Pavlov. Welcome. How are you? We were talking about Ubuntu Mate, privacy, uh, technology, and stuff like that. So, again, those of you who are joining in late, you can replay this uh, back. And I may try and transcode this uh, tomorrow to an MP3 if you want to download it. Uh, Bulgarian. Yeah, my first phone was a bag bag phone. Okay. So you can imagine that. And then I went uh, to the full brick. Miami Vice, was, yeah. Was, yeah. I remember that, sure, yeah. 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 And, and Arena says, old-fashioned fridge. There now. Yeah. Uh, I know, I saw a fridge at Lowe's. It was like $5,000 for a fridge. It had a full screen, you know, that, oh, my God. It looked cool, but for five grand, I don't know. Yeah, but that'll but order that, your, your groceries for you. Well, I guess you can make and receive calls from the fridge. <laughs> okay, it'd be like, say you call me, uh, I say, okay, hang on, hang on, Joe, I gotta open the fridge and grab me your, how you doing, man? Okay, I mean, that's, I, I don't know about that, but, uh, uh, you remember when you could only have, you could only have conversations on nights and weekends, coding, that's right, to get the unlimited, right, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Flip phone, I still got one of those two laid around. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I, uh, I have to tell sure. you, Carmine, my yeah. father has a flip phone that I sent to him that was my daughter's phone that she used for a year or so mm-hmm. or two years. 
I sent it to him, uh-huh. and he's still using it. He's 14 years old, and he's got the original battery in it. Wow. <laughs> That's power. Yeah. Yeah, batteries today's phones, they're just, they just suck. I'm sorry, but yeah. Flip phone, well, because flip phones didn't do a lot of data back then. You know, they just make it receive calls. I think Nokia phones, even they're coming out with the new ones, 30 day standby. Terrific, you know. Um, but um, I mean, these these come in. These smartphones come in handy. Catch your messages, whatever, back and forth, videos. It's nice, but I'm surprised I don't have more neck problems. You know, constantly looking down, <laughs> down like, you know. Um, yeah. Well, you know, everybody talks about camera privacy too. Putting a piece of tape over. Yeah. It. My grandson walks in and says. Grandpa, what's that sock over the top of your camera? So that's what I use. I t- cut off the tip of an old sock and I put it on the camera when I'm done using it. Well, my phone is usually in my pocket, so there's none to look at. Or if it's on the table, the camera's facing up at the ceiling. So it, it doesn't really bother. I mean, I don't, you know. Of, of course, I, I could take it in the bathroom and say, oh, so you want to spy on me? You, sp- you know, spy on this and point it through the toilet bottom, you know. but <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Tim says, I can look inside the fridge to see if I missed anything on the list. Using my Android phone from the grocery store. Cool, but yeah, kind of creepy. Ah. Uh, Anna Rita's having a good laugh. Yes. It's the Joe Comedy Hour. <laughs> yeah. But, um, black electric tape, okay. Mm-hmm. That'll work. But yeah, you mentioned Mark Zuckerberg. He does have tape and he's in charge of his own company well well, there you go even he's paranoid so what does that tell you um let me scroll down the comments real quick i don't think we missed anything yeah pretty Mm -hmm. soon our microwaves will be listening to our showers Mm. Yeah, Adam, toilet humor is always very good. Yeah. If you want to share photos, just send an email. Okay. No social website necessary. True. Mm Mm-hmm. I wonder how many in the audience are on Ubuntu Mate. Not to go backwards, but I'm just curious. No, that's this is the Ubuntu Mate Mate podcast. Sure, yeah. Uh, And anybody in the stream use or has used will use Ubuntu Mate. Yeah, that's what the topic's about. I know we talked about quite a few things. Uh, Tim says 100% true privacy online is a dream. Yes, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. The one comment I want to make back on the distro thing again, real quick too, is. If you recall, I had tried Mate, I want to say it was 1604. Uh-huh. And then when, I don't know if it was 1610 or 1704, I think it was 1704 when they went to the dark themes. And I still had a couple of quirks with that. It wasn't working quite right. I okay. Mean, I gave up pretty quick. The one thing I guess I want to say about that is just because a distro doesn't maybe work the first time, don't give up on it totally. Every so often, sometimes you may want to go back to it and check because sometimes they fix things or they update stuff or uh, they change something. And the other thing, too, is is how many people really send in bug reports if they have a mm, problem mm. because that's also what helps the developers know that there's a problem. Yes, you can't fix something right. if you don't know about it. Right. Distro 2 says, not a mate, too stable for me. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, so everybody, please subscribe to DistroTube, the unstable channel. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Adam says, I stopped using my tape about a year ago after a very long time. Why did you stop, Adam? Just out of curiosity. Rex Evan. Uh, that is a new name, I think. Welcome, Rex. Everybody say hello to Rex if you are new. Hello. Planning to, he says, planning to use Ubuntu Mate because I think Ubuntu is going to be a resource uh, hot hog. It It is a hog. Um, Rex, I use Ubuntu uh, with GNOME in a um, test machine, Toshiba. 
with four gigs of RAM, and you need at least that. I never thought Linux would be a little bit heavier than Windows 10, but if that feels a little bit heavier. Um, it runs, it's stable. 1804 is great. Well, it will be great. It's due out next month. It works. Just have lots of RAM. Because it ain't going to work well without lots of RAM. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll give them credit. Ubuntu, uh, the new Ubuntu. It works. It is stable. It just, it's just, it's heavy, you know. Um, hello, Rex. Welcome. Is this your first time, Rex, to the to a live stream? Welcome. I try to do these at different times. You know, when, when I had the Patreon page, one of the rewards or one of the things you guys asked was to do more live streams so people around the world could join in. Uh, and I did, the, I, do that, I did that as a reward. Uh, I don't have Patreon anymore. I have PayPal. But I try to do these at, at different times to get everybody involved as much as possible because that's how I would want to view something, you know, or, or get involved in something um, here on YouTube. Um, never turn down free as in beer, DT, okay? Well, you're going to need lots of beer with your unstable OSs. <laughs> uh, I wonder, anybody in the stream, are they looking at 1804 to try it out? Because uh, the, uh, what is it that's going to have the dash? Which, which, um, you know what I'm trying to think of, not the, uh, Oh, what are you, I'm drawing a blank now. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Cooper, not Cupertino. What's the one I'm thinking of that? Is M gonna, a mutiny in Ubuntu Mate? Yes, that's what I was trying to think mutiny, of. Mutiny, yeah. Uh, that's what's going to have the full dash in it, and that looks pretty nice. And that's very, if you're kind of torn between customizability and a and GNOME, if you're a GNOME fan, mm -hmm. that has a GNOME-like feel and appearance and yeah. there's supposed to be a lot of good changes coming out in, in 1804. Yeah, I've tested Ubuntu Mind 1804, that new uh, Mutiny. Uh, it looks great. It, Ubuntu Mate, I'm testing it in a USB uh, live uh, stick. It, I think it's going to be fantastic. I can't see myself uh, switching from Ubuntu Mate anytime soon. I just don't. You know, once you get locked into something that works, Joe, and it's out of the box, no surprises, I'm not going to switch. I may, I may distro hop in terms of testing in, in, in a separate machine, but that's as far as I go. Um, Red Robo says he's running Kaboom 1804. Okay. I have tested that. It looks nice. Yes. He says very solid. All right, Ben, you need to go. Catch you next time. Thanks. Uh, Joe, there's a question for you there from Anna, your favorite yeah, desktop environment. I was just going to type it in, but I might as well just answer it. Uh, yeah, Anna Rita said, what is my de favorite mm -hmm. desktop environment? And I like Mate. I mean, it's to me, it's it, it operates mm -hmm. the way I want. It's yeah, and not because it's like Windows, but it, the, there is a familiarity that way. But I just like the keystrokes and the ease of being able to use it. Uh, the one thing I will suggest to anybody, and a lot of times you always think of this, I have two SSDs that boot separately in here and one I wiped windows off and I have MX-17 but I, what I'm going to do is when um, 1804 comes out I'm going to mm -hmm. put it on the other drive because okay. one thing you don't want to do is maybe bring out something that is brand new yeah. that may still have bugs Yeah, that's going to be your daily driver that you perform your, your work on or you yeah. may have to have, you know, do pr some sort of production or whatever you don't want to yeah. put yourself in a vulnerable right. spot if there is a problem Yes. So if you have a second drive, if mm -hmm. you don't have a second computer, right. and it doesn't have to necessarily be internal, you can actually run it off of yeah. a, an external as well if you need to. So, Yeah. Um, Adam says his wife is there. She says hi. Hello, Adam's wife. Hello. Um, yeah, and see, XFCE, I see Anna Rita said that too, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, XFCE is a very nice environment, but for whatever reason, it doesn't play nice on this particular machine. It mm. runs great on my laptop, but it doesn't. Yeah, and, and it actually runs great in the other. Yeah, uh, it's a Dell Inspiron okay. 660S. So, Tim, I would use if not for Mate, if it went away, would I use? Uh, well, I guess Unity is still around. You can still install the Unity desktop. I I might go back to that. I think SF XFCE is fine, lightweight. Um, but I would probably, 
aside from Unity, which is a little bit heavy, I, I might stick towards something, you know, fast. Of course, if you have, you know, lots of RAM, it doesn't matter, a beefy machine. But in terms of the how it looks, I, I, I like XFCE. That, that might be my next choice, possibly, yeah. Um... KDE is a nice environment too, I think. Yeah, it's gone faster. KDE might be one I would might use every day. It's gone faster, and it looks it looks great. Yeah, uh, coding says you use Ubuntu seventeen, never have any problems. But heavy doesn't sound good. Yeah. Um, well, again, if you're going to use Ubuntu, I would have at least you should have at least four gigs of RAM, in my opinion, or else it's just not going to feel smooth. It's just the way it is. Putting putting extensions aside because the more you install, it may slow you down. So, um, SSDs will help with that too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sneaky Linux, welcome. Desktop works for you. Stay with it unless it stops working. Then try something else. Simple, simple common sense. There, Sneaky. I totally agree. Steve uses XFCE. Abdelatif Zuliga, welcome. You use Ubuntu Mate. Uh, Arch, KD. Ah, Arch user, very good. <laughs> Everything cool says Ubuntu is rubbish now. Well, I guess for some people it is. <laughs> uh, KD is just have too much customization and settings. Oh, so it's overwhelming, Anna Rita. Uh, okay, all right. I guess it can be. It's not that difficult to learn, though. Um... <laughs> so we've been talking about among other things uh, Ubuntu Mate uh, it is my Linux gold standard at least for beginners it has been for a while it just you know I started off with Ubuntu in 06 with this type of GUI graphical user interface this GNOME to look or GNOME or Genome whatever you want to call it it was my first desktop environment in Linux it was easy. It's come back on Ubuntu Mate. It's still easy. Uh, and I think it's something for beginners uh, to Linux to consider. And I've been doing this a long time. You guys know I call it as I see it, good and bad. Um, you know, you know. be careful when somebody says, trust me. But I think in this situation, trust me, try Ubuntu Mate. So. Uh, Anna Rita says you're getting too old to mess with too much settings. Oh, so are you 21 plus tax also, Anna Rita? <laughs> uh, let's see. Distro 2, you might have to install Ubuntu Mate on one of your machines so I can SSH into my production machine and reboot NTX when it freezes. Okay. I'm telling you, man, Ubuntu Mate, it just, everything works. You'll have more time to do stuff, less headaches, DT. And, uh, you know, more time for yourself. And no freeze-ups on a live stream. And for the record, not sounding like I'm, pardon the phrase, kissing up, but because of you, Carmine, I think that's what really pushed me into Montumate because you have been so consistent and solid with it for as long as I can remember. There Thank are you. a lot of people out there that talk well of it, but you were the one that Thank really you. seemed to stay... I want to say probably the longest out of most people I've seen with it. So, you know, um, Anna Rita says 40 years old. Well, happy 40 years old, Anna Rita. Yeah. Um, when something doesn't work, Joe, Linux, Mac, or whatever, Linux, it's easy to get, it's easy to trash something to get instant gratification like I installed ABC Linux boy it sucks you're just happy because it feels good if you know it's easy I guess it's human nature to just blast something be negative let it all out because you know it feels good as it were but it's not helping someone if you try anything Linux or Windows and if it doesn't work okay if you and I've ranted a little bit in the past but I try to be uh, I mean it is a family channel 
but if I rant, I give my reasons. Well, you know, I installed this ABC Linux, but man, I have problems with this. I couldn't get this to work. It, I'm not lying. I'm calling it as I see it, and that's quote my rant. So if you're going to be negative about something, you have to, you have to, especially for the beginner, you have to explain why, you know. Well, I didn't like it because I was confused. It didn't look good. I had you know it crashed. You know those are all valid reasons. But just to say, well, Linux sucks or this sucks, that's not helping anyone. Now if you say, well, it didn't work out. It sucked because. Um, you know, I clicked that and it froze. I did a full install, but you know, I couldn't get the apps to install. It was resource. Now you're giving A, B, C reasons in a <laughs> intelligent way to tell someone why it doesn't work. On the flip side, if it does work as an Ubuntu Mate, you should praise it, you know. And I think that's the only way people are going to develop a, a certain level of trust. Uh, the only way they're going to truly learn something from someone or some people that they can trust. Um, you know, I learned the hard way. It was trial and error. Back in 06, there wasn't a lot on YouTube about Linux. I, I learned the hard way. Back and forth, hopping back and forth. In 2010, I started my channel. Now, of course, there's a lot of good Linux uh, channels on YouTube. And, and, and maybe it's oversaturated. I don't know. But that's good for the consumer. That's awesome. But no, I've had people thank me as it were. Uh, but you know what? Maybe maybe it's my New York thing. I call it as I see it, good and bad. If it's good, I'll say great because of these reasons. If it's not good, well, instead of cursing, I'll just say forget about it. Hmm. Uh, and people get the message. And I think that's why I'm still here after you know eight years. But um, and from other YouTubers like. If you just show me what you mean when it's not good or good, I get it. Uh, people will get it, you know. And that's what it comes down to. Uh, Anna Rita says, Toss, we are creatures that do not like change. Well, uh, to a certain point. Um, I mean, when I was distro hopping, I was changing almost every day, every week. It was fun in the beginning. But change for the sake of change and not self-knowledge or growth or knowledge is not very wise, you know. Uh, now, I did it to learn about Linux. I taught myself, and that's good. But after a certain point, if you distro hop for the sake of distro hop, and the results are usually, it's not working, then what's the point? Because now there's a pattern. It's almost that definition of insanity, you know. Keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Uh, and after so many years of doing it, I've, I've, I've come down to maybe five or ten distros where I could say, yeah, if you're a beginner, give, give these a shot based on my experience after years of doing it. But, you know, I didn't trash someone. Uh, I didn't trash an OS completely. <laughs> At least I didn't think so. I ranted about it. That, Man, this doesn't feel like it's for beginners, you know. But I'm calling it as I see it because I don't want a newbie to try something that, that, that they should not be trying and say Linux sucks. That would not be a fair statement. In that particular instance in time, Linux may have sucked. But if you try, say, Arch and you're a newbie, well, it's just the wrong distro to try out. You can't say Linux, well, it sucked because you picked the wrong one. We're not saying that Arch Linux sucks. Your choice may have, quote, sucked as it were um that's right distro tube i did somewhat trash true you are correct but i but i gave my reasons didn't i, I call that as i see it i didn't just say it's no good and signed off at least i didn't think so did, did i if i did it wasn't it was wrong for me to do it but i don't think you like true os either right dt but yeah, True OS was supposed to be for beginners, right? And I looked, I'm like, what the crap is this? I'm just calling it as as I see it. But I gave my reasons. Well, and there are some really bad, let's say for what it is, there are some really bad distros out there. Now, that being said, much just like what you said, you know, I have Peppermint on two machines here. It works great. 
yet it won't run on my main machine like I would yeah. like it to. And yeah. could it be because it's a dual monitor thing? If I run it on one monitor here, it might do everything I want. Right, right. You know, right. so as I said earlier on the show, it could very well just be hardware. And that's the beauty of these distros. One of the things that people don't think about, and we have talked about this, is Mac, Windows, and Linux. All of them break. Yes. Not just at Linux. I've heard so many times people say, oh, Linux sucks as always breaks. Well, think about especially Windows 10. Windows 10 has been a, a overall decent dish or yeah. distro, I call it, operating yeah. system. But how many times, as I said, yeah. I've heard yeah. of right. the crashing systems or hardware. Or, as a matter of fact, in its early days when they first launched it, if you could believe this, I actually had seen reports of it physically trashing hardware. Now, how oh. it does that, I don't know, but yeah. it did. And, you know, hard drives or whatever, or speakers. I don't know if it was a driver. I don't know how that works through a software thing, but it was not a fluff story. It was verified yes. to do yeah. that. Yeah. So everything breaks at a point. It's yes. just what you find is going to break the least. And tr what I find in Linux, majority of the time, and this holds true for me, is a lot of times if this breaks, it's because I'm messing with it. And part of okay. it is because that's how yeah. I learn. Um, so yeah, yeah. one of the things as you evolve in this, as we've said before, kind of reiterating is you find something that works, leave it as your main thing, and you want to play around. You get Because I still get curious. I'm tired of hopping, but I get curious. So that what I do, I got a, a newer hardware because I have a bunch of old hardware stuff. I know okay. I'll focus on that. Okay. I wanted to have some newer hardware to test it on. So I yes. bought it. A cheaper laptop with a you know an i3 in it and uh, you know eight gigs of RAM or whatever. So you know it, it's you have to be fair. You have to be open minded yes. to yes. it, and you have to decide yeah. what is it that you want. Right. Even when you're building a computer or buying a computer, you don't buy it just to have the biggest and baddest stuff. You buy it based on your use, and it's the same thing with a distro. You you pick the distro that works for you and what you like about it, how it's going to be used. And what you want to do with it? I am a person, just like you are, that loves to customize. Yes. Till the and the cows come home, it's yes. never enough. And, and MX seventeen, I think that was one of the attractions to me about uh, MX seventeen, is because there's things in there yeah. like the ability to pair up an iPhone, which I will nice. admit, Monty doesn't do yet. It'll recognize it, but it won't recognize the files yet. Yeah. MX seventeen has a built-in app that will do that. Um, nice. It also has the ability to do your own spin if you want. You know, so I mean, there's yeah. a lot. As a matter of fact, that's a distro that could be much like Mate. I don't agree necessarily that Mate is just for newbies. I think it's for anybody, to be truthful. It's yeah. a newbie friendly. Yeah. But I think it could be for the advanced users too because of what you can do with it. And MX is probably. A couple of steps above that because yeah. or more because you can do a lot of things with it. Matter of fact, yeah. if you remember right, Zeb was talking about in there the danger of opening up as root and mm -hmm. killing something in the system. So they right. they listen and you know Dolphin did some I believe it was him or one of the developers corrected that to a point where you know you you have to go through a couple of hops in order to turn around and and cause that problem. So, there were. There were times in the past years ago when I'd be looking at a Linux review, as it were, an OS, and oh, uh, you know, the guy would say, "Oh, I see. Well, that's different. Oh, that looks nice. Uh, take a look at this," and then it would end. Okay, take a look at the latest ABC Linux you might like, and I'm like, "It's junk. <laughs> what are you talking about?" You know, it's, Tim says, "I I, I didn't trash. Uh, I think I was negative." I don't like to be negative about some because I mean some work goes into making an operating system, but if you say it's for beginners, it's obviously not. It's misleading, and there have been systems that there was one. Check out the new ABC Linux. We designed it for everybody based on Debian un unstable. I'm sorry. Did you say beginners and unstable? <laughs> sure. Let's make him try Windows 11 and it's unstable. I don't get it. <laughs> what are you trying to... <laughs> you should be able to express your opinion. If you're truly presenting something as an overview or review, you're doing it based on your opinion. People should recognize it as your opinion. And if you don't like something, 
you shouldn't sugarcoat it for the, the fear of of uh, right. offending somebody. But like right. you also said, it's how you present it. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're doing it in a derogatory manner, or you're being belittling or that kind of thing, right? You know, right. that's a different story. But let as I just said, let's face yeah. it. There's a couple of distros out there that I think are are total garbage. But you know, mm-hmm. you ignore them because there's a thousand other ones out there that you can look at. Right. Right. You know. So it's it's, it's how, how you it's it's how you say it. Um, a couple of weeks ago on um, Brian Lunduk's channel, uh, Linux Thursday or whatever. Now I dual boot multiple machines. I don't have a problem. So they were talking about ways to test Linux. Uh, obviously, best way is, is to on a spare machine buy a spare machine. I bought and refurbished ThinkPads. I'll give a plug to ThinkPads. They're awesome. Um, if you're shopping for something, check out the links below in the show notes in this tree. I think I, I put a couple Amazon links to help out the channel. One is for deals. One is for for books. If you're interested. But I'm running a Lenovo desktop to stream this, and on my test machines I have ThinkPads and once Toshiba. But he, you know, he says, well, you know, you can do a the virtual machine, uh, a spare machine, a USB. But then, then they talked about dual booters, <laughs> and he says, uh, dual booting is for schmucks. Now I did not take it personal. I know what he meant. It made me laugh. What he was trying to say that dual booting is not the best way to truly test Linux have a spare machine so you don't accidentally break something that's what he said now I got it I you know read between the lines but the way he said it it sounded like he was being mean and derogatory he really wasn't Brian the super cool guy I haven't spoken to or met yet but it made me laugh but it's how he say it he didn't say oh they're schmucks dual booters are schmucks they're stupid what he didn't say that he said it a quick sentence and and then they kind of brushed it off well you know there's there's better ways to try try Linux again it's how you say it um, so if, if I look at something and it's just not clicking, I'm not going to lie. It, it, you see what I see, guys. This isn't what I thought it was going to be. And you're hoping that the developer, developers, you know what? Maybe we need to reevaluate how we do this particular system or even apps. Um, but, you know, we're not going to convince or convert Windows users if we sugarcoat, like you said, or lie to them, it's just, it's just not going to... I mean, it's tough enough as it is just being completely honest about it, you know. Um, look, all I can say is remain remain calm and try Ubuntu Mate, okay? <laughs> um, am I alone in that I have only dual booted one time in my life? No. For only about three days, but that was it. Okay, no, there's nothing wrong if you don't dual boot. No, no. Think pads rock. I agree, especially older ones. Okay, Red Robo. The I guess the new ones are okay. I don't know, but um, they work for me. The one thing I will suggest to anybody who wants a dual boot is there's two ways. If you only have one drive and you've got Windows on it, mm-hmm. do not just load it up and put it in alongside. Shrink the volumes and put it on its own partitions. Because this way, if you don't like it, you can go back and you shouldn't affect the bootloader in Windows. Or the best way is if you have the ability to put a second drive in, is just load it up on a second drive. Yes. Yeah. And I then, um. Uh, and Rita says the way I see is that we don't we do not convert people to Linux. We migrate them. Fair enough. Colin says, present the distro. If it's rubbish, so to speak, present efforts to fix it. Sure. If efforts are in vain, mention that. Hopefully, developers watching and learns. Okay. Hard work goes into any distro. Yes. Steven Anderson, welcome to the stream. Hello. Yeah. If if I if if I'm negative, it's it's because I have to be. I see with what's in front of me. Um, but I try to do it in a, in, a, in a constructive way to say, look, if you're a beginner, I mean, if you're advanced, it doesn't matter, you know, what you use, Ubuntu Mate or something that looks like, you know, not too um, pleasant on the eyes. But if you're a newbie, you need to steer them in that right direction um, or else they're, they're going to say, no, I'm, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to try it. Um, but, you know, don't you think, Carmine, that... Um these developers, if they 
hear about mm -hmm. reviews like yours or even Derek. I think Derek did one. Correct me mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, Derek, if you're still out there. External OS. He pointed out a lot of things about that. If and I believe it was his about that that did not make sense. And perhaps if these developers see this, it'll raise a flag and it'll fix the problem. Yes. Potentially. Or maybe they think, well, yes. you know what? I don't care what you think. This is the way we like it and this is the way we want it and we think it works yes. fine. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, look, if if Linux if certain specific Linux desktop wasn't good, I wouldn't be here. There would be almost no reason. I, I would do exclusively Windows videos, you know, because I'm comfortable. In fact, somebody said, uh, Toss, you have great videos. You, you, you should have more subscribers if you, maybe if I had just chosen Linux or just Windows, but that's not what I, what, you know, what I do. Um, but if Linux wasn't, hasn't gone to the point where it can replace your Windows system, maybe Mac, I wouldn't be here. There would, there would be no reason for us to talk. Uh, Linux is everywhere, as we've talked about. People don't realize it. You know, it's in your cars, space station, GPS, phones. It's just not everywhere in stores or on, on a desktop yet. Uh, I mentioned before, Google has the resources to make a desktop for the masses. They've chosen not to. I don't know why. Uh, but if Linux wasn't good enough to run every day, you know, I mean, I, you know, Linux, Linux as a whole is not easy because when you talk in Linux as a whole, you're talking, you know, Arch, Gentoo, the ones that are not for newbies, testing, unstable. Linux as a whole, it's a complete package, is not easy. It just isn't. If we're talking specific distributions, desktops, it, it is, it is easy, like Ubuntu Mate, Peppermint, Linux Mint, MX17. But we shouldn't, we shouldn't deceive newbies when we say Linux is easy. No, it's not. As a whole, Linux is not because you have to also include the ones that are not newbie friendly. You know, is specific Linux easy? Oh, absolutely. That's why I'm doing it. I'm doing it on Ubuntu Mate. I would never do this on Gentoo. Nothing against Gentoo. Nothing against Arch. It just, I don't want to learn something new, you know, because I'm happy with, with what I have. Uh, and maybe, Joe, maybe that's the same way that you feel, so... Well, the conversations that are being had right now about this are because Linux is a desktop, which really wasn't, it's been around a long time, but it really wasn't a thing until the last several years, especially yeah. when XP went, went away and that kind yeah. of thing. But Linux has been around for a long, long time. Yes. I mean, it's been from the enterprise level. It runs radio stations. It runs your cars. It runs yeah. your refrigerators. It yeah. runs all kinds of things. It runs your smartphones. Yes. That people don't realize that that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And the reason now it's on the radar is because of the desktop. And the desktop still has a ways to go. But if you think about it where it was just a short period ago, you know, yeah. it's, it's evolved quite well. And it's evolving. I, I don't know how you feel about this, but I think it's evolving a lot quicker yes. than what it used to because it is becoming what it is now. So I, yeah. I, do, I do definitely agree with a lot of what you said. Um, and I am very happy. I'm a, have I become a enthusiast? Absolutely. That said, I do think that sometimes the more you know about something, the worse it can be for you mm -hmm. because that's when yeah. you tend to critique it more. You tend yes. to hate things about stuff more. Yeah. Where if you're an, if you're looking to start and just have something that works and use it for something and it works for you and you're happy and you're innocent about it, fine. Well, the big box you mentioned before. I'm sorry, yeah. but my, yeah. before I thought. Isn't Walmart looking to put some on the shelf with, I want to say, is it elementary or one of those, I think? You know, they tried uh, eight years ago, around that time, something called GOS on the shelf. It was awful. It was, oh, God, it didn't last long. I don't know if, if they're trying to bring something back. Certainly, they have the footprint. They are. Um, I don't which it is. Oh, I thought it was elementary. I, I could live with that. As long as it's stable. Number one, listen, if it's elementary or whatever deal contract they get, uh, elementary, Ubuntu, you'll never get a second chance to make a good first impression. And if it's elementary or whatever and it comes out of the box with bugs, forget about it. Nothing gets elementary. But think about it. Suppose you bought a Windows machine 
and it was full of bugs. But but would you be happy? No. Yeah. If there was if there is one time where a Linux machine should have zero bugs is if you buy a Linux machine where the Linux distro should have zero bugs because if you want bugs, why pay for it? You could just download them, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So that is the only time where either Windows, Linux, or Mac where the machine should have zero issues because that's what you're paying for. Now, if you download distros to test whatever, it, you know, it can happen. But yeah, if Walmart's gonna do that with elementary, fine. It's, it's a great looking distro, but I'm telling you, if it has any bugs, it ain't going nowhere. Because it'll be the first impression for that user who doesn't watch these this content. And with this bugs, oh, I told you Linux sucks. Well, there you go. That's the end of that, in my opinion. To be negative is okay. To rant is okay. But you have to do it in a way that's that's for the common good, meaning what knowledge does that person get if you're negative or positive, you know, if that makes any sense. But I just want to say, yeah, you mentioned Walmart. I think it's great if it's true. Uh, Colin, but I have no bugs. Coffee on his loud keyboard to answer Colin in there. So that's why I've been doing a lot of typing. So I'm hoping it doesn't come across too loud. Uh, but, no, uh, he had made a comment about you know how he felt about the install between Windows and Linux, and I yeah. actually believe kind of the opposite. Yeah, now, yeah. Yeah. He talks about you know the ease of installation. Well, yeah, Windows part of the biggest problem is then you got to load how many drivers and everything else. Where yes. that used to yes. be the problem for Linux years ago yes. is trying to get drivers in there. Where now, yes. especially Wi-Fi, I plug a, a distro in, load it up, and everything just tends to work. It's very rare when I have to get maybe one or two drivers, you know, particularly the proprietary, like for yeah. running gaming. But DT or, says or, Linux is never going to be a pot, be a, never going to be popular on desktop as long as you have to install it yourself. Well, that's why I said put it in stores. I would have to agree. Um, for 99 percent of the popular, getting them to even download a nice and make a bootable USBs and well, I hope not a lot. I mean, that's why I'm here. You know, I've had some people comment, no offense, Toss, but you sound like a newbie. I'm like, no, no, thank you. <laughs> that's, I mean, I know what you're trying to say, but it, I'm, I'm hoping it's channels like mine to make it easier for newbies. Look, making a USB bootable stick is not, there's nothing to it, you know. And if you don't like it, don't, it ain't going to trash anything. Uh, but DT, you know, DistroTube has a point. But there has to be a Linux for the masses out of the box that's affordable. Okay? And what the, that's code for saying it's got to be priced less than Windows. Even if it's only 50 bucks, just to get them to try it because people are fickle. They're set in their ways, you know. Um, now, if that Linux distro or machine sells and it's stable out of the box and the word spreads, then you can charge whatever you want for that machine, comparable to Windows. Uh, but man, you're gonna buy a Linux machine, and it's your first time. That sucker better work out of the box, or else forget about it. So, well, on the downside, that you know, as much as I love System76, the downside is they are a little bit still on the pricier side. I wish yes, they, they are. With yes. a more entry level machine. Yes, and I think they would do better. But yes. they are solid running, and they offer yes. a, a fantastic support network for their machines. Mm -hmm. And and you pay for that with the price, I think, with the service. Right. And that's I have no problem with that. Um, I think Brian Lunduk, that's all he uses. Of course, he's being sponsored by them. But I believe when he says that the machines work. Uh, but they are pricey. That's why I don't think that's for the masses in stores. Online, it's fine. But in the stores, for example, if you have a Windows machine, say, starting at 350 low end, you, you need to have a Linux one starting at 300, 325 tops just to get the person, oh, wait a minute, this is priced less. Why? Well, because this has elementary OS and this is what it looks like. It looks okay, all right. Uh, be a high end Linux machines in stores is not going to work. It's just not going to work. Um, what time? It's 10.48. I'll, I'll tell you what. Let's wrap this up at about... There's still people coming on and that's fine. I want to, don't want to drag this too long. Let's wrap this up in about 12 minutes or so if that's okay. So okay. people know. You know. Um, making Linux and mass production will require an OS that is stable. Yeah. In the long 
time like LTS or Debian stable? Yes, Rex, I agree. <clears throat> I need to grab a drink. I'm, I'm going to grab me a Gatorade. I'll be right back. I'm going to mute okay. my mic here. Yeah, I, you know, when you look at what System76 is trying to do now, um, not only with the distribution that they've produced for themselves, but the machines themselves, I have really, I don't know if anybody else has had any exposure in the stream to the machine other than what they've heard, if they've ever used one. Um, I've toyed with the idea of buying one to have it. Uh, they seem pretty solid. I do know that one or two of their models were rebrands, which now that's also going to be changing. I understand that they uh, are going to be 100% producing the machines here in the US. Um, I think it's very smart of them to respin if for what it, all intents and purposes what it is the distro you know the branded for themselves and that that sort of thing because i also think that helps with uh the support they can offer um so that's a i'm i'm very pleased to promote them even though i haven't physically used the machine yet because i you know again you look at chris fisher not just Brian Lundu, but Chris Fisher, he's used a bunch of these, you know, the Bonobo and whatever other ones he's tried. And, and same thing with uh, Noah Chalaya, you know, so those are people I respect and I, yeah. I base my opinions also on that as well. Uh, the other one that does have Ubuntu available, <laughs> but they are unfortunately really out there in price. But part of the reason is like you said, paying for it is Puget systems. But you theoretically, you have a problem with that machine for life. They replace the machine, so that's yes. you're kind of almost like paying for future right. machines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and, and what you're paying for those, and that's another rock solid company too. But they also do Windows machines, so it's not just Linux. But they have it. Uh, in talk, seeing what Derek's been writing in here, yeah, I, I made that comment on Big Daddy's too about you know seeing them on the store shelves, but as I said in the, in to one of the responses is like even Dell, uh, you know, Dell and there are some other big you know companies that are offering Linux, but they don't really put it out there, you know, in the public guy again, they don't push it. And I think that's kind of what it needs to help get it off the ground. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, look, Google's got the resources. They got, they got the funding, they got the manpower, they got the name, they got, uh, you know, they got the uh, Android, phones android os chrome os they can do it they haven't i, I don't know why i mean th think about it. you you buy you buy an apple a mac because you can sync your iphone like that why not make a mass marketed android box so you can sync your phone like that a android phone like that. it makes sense to me but okay whatever yeah. uh to meff need to go okay cool yeah, I we was I wasn't planning on two hours, but you guys kept coming on, and I don't want to cut anybody off too short. So I'm happy to stay on a little bit longer. Yeah, but like I said, we'll we'll wrap this up here shortly. Yeah. <clears throat> so once again, we've been talking about mainly about Ubuntu Mate and Linux, uh, among other topics such as privacy. If you if you come across this stream, the live stream. Uh, thank you for stopping by. First of all, thanks to Joe for joining in. Check out Ubuntu Mate. It's spelled Mate, M-A-T-E, but it, it, it is pronounced Mate. UbuntuMate.org, I do believe. Um, it's a great OS. Check it out as an alternative or maybe just to try it out. If you have a spare machine, great. If you don't, you can install a virtual machine that plays nice or put it on a USB stick and boot from this. You need to go into the BIOS. Um, boot order I think it's some machines that scale I think this one is uh, enter or F2 or F12 or something and make sure that your hard drive the machine boots off of this first you can try without no chance of messing up your Windows partition and at least you get an idea of what it looks like uh, but yeah Linux is great um, updates a lot faster it is more secure in general privacy but once you get on the web I don't know about that uh, but general with Linux, in general, you, you don't have to worry about viruses or anything like that. It'll run faster. It's great for reviving older machines uh, that you have laying in storage, maybe. At least a lightweight OS like Ubuntu Mate or Peppermint OS or Linux Mint. Um, 
and that's what really Linux is all about it's it's about a choice to try something different you might like it better to make your life easier um, okay Colin you need to go very good Tim F okay yeah. all right you do too <laughs> take care toss and Joe great stream no freezes ah, <laughs> freezing on here forget about it. That's because it's Mate. It's Mate, man. Yeah. That's right, mate. Mates play well with mates. Ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, if you haven't figured out we're Linux fanboys yet, well, I should say I am anyway. Because <laughs> I know you you said that before. I don't want to speak for you because you, you said that before. I'm that, a fan yeah, of yeah, Linux. I guess you call me a fanboy. I'm not. I'm not fanatical about anything in general. I go with what works, and if that's being a fanboy, no, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I call myself an enthusiast. Let me correct myself. There we go, enthusiast. Yeah, I, a I, I love, just, I really just a fan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Anna Rita says Linux is like picking your underwear, and one day you go with pink, the other day blue. Uh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> so it's underwear hopping, but a bump bump. Yeah, but that said, that's the huge difference between Linux and Windows because you can you can modify that it is true you can pick something different you don't that like is it true it something else Windows what you get is what you get so yeah. again not putting yeah. it down but everything has its limitations everything yeah. has its its quirks and we've said that yeah. before too no matter what distro you pick there's gonna yeah. be one thing about it that's gonna bug you there always is yeah but yeah yeah. If you accept- twenty six ten says hello. Well goodbye. We're gonna hop off here soon, <laughs> KO. But welcome to the stream. <laughs> Kagan just jumped on. I wonder when you're gonna come on, Kagan. Good evening. Uh you can replay this back. We're almost done. <laughs> I knew I knew this is gonna happen, Joe. It always happens, you know. Oh. It's either people come on late 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 later we talk or we're talking about food. And yep. people get hungry. <laughs> well, I've had a couple recently where it's been Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, that, right. that that's that's true. Yes. Hello, yeah. Rick. Another late bloomer, a late comer. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. Good night, Steve. Gerst. So yeah, just as usual, play this back, and you'll be able to catch up on what we talked about. So, um, oh, Tom just sent it his stream from Switch. Got it. Okay. Well, that's okay. That, that's that's cool. He he did a long one too. What did he talk about? Was it was it Facebook or something? Red Robo, thank you. English Bob, Steve. Oh, just for EB, oh. we gotta stay on a little bit longer. What's up? What's up, Bob? Would you like to join the stream? <laughs> I gotta have him on, Joe. Yeah. He's yeah, good about Yeah, him. would you like to come on the uh, stream for a little chat? I know uh, EB, you do used to used to do a lot of distro. Hopping, I don't know how you stay sane, but used to. <laughs> you he used to toss cooking and traveling in Linux. There we go. Ah, <laughs> uh... uh... just got up. Got to go work. Okay, all right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, you went to a memorial for parents who have lost a child. Oh, oh. at a local children's hall, they came home and made some insane notches. Got it. Understood, Kagan. Okay. Yeah, I had a quick snack tonight in a granola bar, chocolate peanut butter, and uh, anyway. I'm getting hungry now because it's <laughs> time to talk about food. I'm getting hungry. See? Yeah, I'm okay. I had a good dinner. I had uh, Kroger's had asparagus on sale. Not any sense. I love asparagus. You know, yeah. There's just something about it. I had that and chicken and stuff like that. So, but I'm good. Well, you know what? We're gonna get on the food subject for a second. Sure. I gotta tell you, we're talk- you talk about Italian heritage. Yes. My grandparents, my grandmother, they made uh-huh. everything from scratch, and I have yet. Yeah. We're coming close, but I have yet to duplicate the pizza. Ah. And I need to go down to Little Italy, where my family originated in Chicago. Ah, yes. And talk to somebody who makes it down there, because there's an airiness about the crust. 
It yes. has that crispy olive oil taste. And the yes. difference is it's not made like most people know pizza. So you, I asked my father this because she made it in a one-inch sheet pan uh-huh. and then put some oil on there, Put you know, made the homemade dough, which the dough sat overnight. You didn't put it in the fridge for an hour okay. and pull it out. And then a little bit of light sauce. And her marinara was so light you could taste it, but you couldn't see it. Okay. If that makes sense. And then she would sometimes, depending if somebody wanted a little more cheese, maybe put a little mozzarella on the bottom. Mm. Usually she didn't. And then yeah. Get that second, because then you put your toppings. Yes. And then you take the parmesan and you put parmesan mm-hmm. and you make that yeah. on top. Oh my God, it's mm-hmm. it's to die for. It's the best pizza ever. And it, I don't know about you, I don't like heavy, thick, doughy crust. I like mm. that light, airy, crispy. Okay. Okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I like so, white pizza too with anchovies and chopped chopped tomatoes and olives. Yeah. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. Well, my son actually has been practicing and he's gotten really good at it. So, <laughs> yeah. Kagan says, is this one of those all Italian live streams where I wake up tied to a chair to the warehouse? <laughs> <laughs> Next to the Cadillac truck? Yeah. Yeah. No, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah. I told that joke too. We were walking out of the restaurant one night, mm, and I had, yeah. Yeah, my mother-in-law, when she passed away, we, her car she had a, a big Mercury Grand Marquis. Oh wow! It, it was still in today's world a trunk that had it was big. Yeah. And I popped the trunk, and I was going to throw my bag in there. And my son-in-law says, I, "I'm not getting in there." I said, "Listen, uh, if you were, you wouldn't know about it because it'd be lined with plastic. Yeah, and you wouldn't." You just wouldn't know. Oh, <laughs> you know yeah, she starts yeah, laughing. True. You know. Oh, you gotta love the Italian jokes. Oh right? yeah. <laughs> oh, we were. I was on one night with Rocco and this, and we had a. Oh, what's it, is it? Ski something? And mm-hmm. we were talking about he Polish jokes and Italian jokes. We just got into it one night at the end. It was so so funny. It was so funny. I forget what the jokes what he said, but uh, oh, that was something. Um. And then I went into a tangent. What if we got uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Rocky Sylvester Stallone talking about Linux in the same room? Hey, let's try KDE. I will try Ubuntu my day. You know, stuff like that. But uh, that was fun. All right, well, guys. Like we are. Italian from Chicago. I used to wear the gold chains. I yeah. still have them. You know, and all these. Sure. You know. I don't wear chains. I. I used to, I think I used to as a kid sometimes wear the cross. I don't not anymore. I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll wear a watch. I don't know why I got my phone, but that's about it when it comes to jewelry. I don't wear rings. It's just, just, just one of those things. Yeah, you know. But I mean, a nice watch. I don't mind that. You know, because I guess I consider the watch a gadget. You know. But yeah. anyway, um, all right. Well, it is eleven o'clock, so I think we will wrap this up. I don't think we missed anybody. If we did. Sorry, but I think we got everybody here. Um, as far as I know, if we if we missed anything or if you missed the stream, just after this process is on YouTube, play it back. Um, if you have questions or comments for me or for Joe, let us know. Uh, if you would like to support the channel, please do. Uh, this is all possible because of you guys. Um, so if you can't support the channel through PayPal, great. There's some Amazon links below. I also have a few t-shirts on teespring.com. I don't have the link with me now, but just search Total OS today on Teespring. You know, if you like the, if you need a shirt or whatever. Um, and we may be back next Friday for this. I usually do the live streams on the weekend, usually. Sometimes during the week. Not as much during the week. Um, so thank you, Anna Rita, Meta Lord, everyone here. Uh, from here and across the pond. As it were, on behalf of myself and Joe, uh, thank you. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. So enjoy your Ubuntu Mate, whatever you use. Be safe, be secure, be private. Uh, Enjoy your technology, but please don't text and drive. And um, take care.